And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. On today's program, we're going to be having my favorite soup, which is French onion soup. I dearly love it. And with that, we're going to have pepper jack cheese and ham sandwiches, and we're going to make a freeform tart called a crostini. We're going to make ours um, apple, and it, it's just absolutely delicious and so easy. And so we're going to get started on that first. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. Now, in my bowl, I've already peeled a few little apples, and I, today I have Macintosh apples. And you'll see my lemon in there because I did them ahead of time and I did not want them to turn brown. So I went ahead and put some squeezed a lemon in there, and that will, the citric acid will keep your fruit from turning brown on you. If you didn't know that, that's a great little trick to keeping your apples and bananas and things like that from turning brown. Now I've got Macintosh apples here, which just so happen to be my favorite apple. You could use whatever kind of apple that you like. And uh, we do want to peel them. Now normally I don't peel apples. I clean them and just keep the peeling on. But, but this particular tart, I'm going to peel them because it just seems to look a little bit prettier. I don't have an apple core. So I cut my apple in half, cut it again in quarters, and then just cut the, the core out because I don't own an apple core. So that works great for me. If you have an apple core, you by all means can use that. But I don't, so we just do it this way. And I've got probably, I don't know, six or seven of these apples because these are very small. You could use um, a Granny Smith apple, and you know, of course, they're much bigger. So you would just need, you know, probably four or five of those. You want a good amount of apples. You want to have a good amount of fruit in your pie, but you don't want it to be too full because this is a freeform tart. And I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. So let me see. I think this may be enough. Let's see what we got. Let's put them in there. If we need to add another one, we will. Let's see. Um, I think we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and take my lemon out. I'm going to go ahead and squeeze the juice. It just adds a little bit of flavor to it so we get any of the excess juice out. Now, in my little cups, I have um, some cornstarch, and we're going to add our cornstarch to our apples. That just helps to thicken up the juices. I'm going to add two teaspoons, and I don't have my spoon. Excuse me just a second. We're going to add a couple of teaspoons of just plain sugar. Macintosh apples are very sweet. If you're using a tart apple, you would want to add probably a little more sugar than what I'm adding. But Macintosh has just got such a sweet flavor. And I've got three teaspoons of just cinnamon. And I'm going to stir all that together. Just mix it up in a, in a just a dish of some sort. Mm. Now, I have just a pretty little dish. You could do this on a regular flat baking dish if you wanted to. That would be perfectly fine. I have a store-bought pie crust. I'm just using one. I'm going to just lay that in here. Don't worry about tucking it in or any of that. Just kind of give yourself a working surface there. I'm going to take my apples. This is so easy to do. And I'm just going to put my apples. Yeah, this will be plenty of apples. Actually, it might be a few too many. We'll see. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. And we're just going to add those right there in the center of our tart. And we're going to bring our crust up. And we're just going to freeform fold the tart in. You see how I'm doing that? And it's okay if it breaks. This is supposed to be very, very rustic in its appearance. It's a country style, um, just an, a freeform tart. So, it, you know, it does not have to be perfect. It's called a crostini. 
See how pretty that looks? Just free form in there. I'm going to dot just a little bit of butter around just to kind of add some flavor. Butter, you know, is just one of those things that's yummy in any kind of a fruit dish. And we're going to put this in the oven for about 10 or 15 minutes. Then we're going to pull it out and I'm going to sprink sprinkle the crust with just a little bit of water. And I bought any grocery store, regular grocery store, if you'll, if you'll see, this is not brown sugar. This is called raw sugar. It's, a, it's made from sugar cane, same as your white sugar, but it has not been processed and it's a little bit crunchier, a little bit more crystal. The, the crystals are formed on there. But we need to let our pie bake for about 10 minutes or so before we do that. So um, we're just gonna get that in the oven and then we're gonna start on my favorite soup. I'll be right back. Now our crostini's in the oven, we're going to get started on our French onion soup, which just so happens to be my favorite soup. I love it. Now I've got a big pot here that I'm preheating, getting it good and warm, and I'm just going to cut some onions. Um, you know, French onion soup, the main ingredient, of course, is onions and cheese. But um, so, you know, I've got about six good sized onions here, and I'll see after I get them chopped at how much that cooks down because, you know, it looks like a lot, but when you cut the onions up and when they sweat out in the, the pan, you know, it really ends up not being quite as much as you think it's gonna be. So we're gonna just chop these onions. And you know something, a lot of people cry when they chop onions, and I don't. <laughs> and I, I, I think it's because I have contacts. I wear contact lenses. And you know what? I could chop onions all day long and would not shed a tear. So that tells me that it's got something to do with those contact lenses in my eyes. So you won't see me crying chopping them. I love onions. They're so good and they're so good for you. They, uh, you know, it, it's got an ingredient in it or a, not an ingredient, but a, a chemical in it that helps to cleanse the blood. It purifies your bloodstream and they're very healthy. And in this soup, they're just so yummy and delicious. Onions, when you cook them down, they get sweet and just so delicious. Now, this is not one of those recipes. And the reason I say this is because this morning when I was in the grocery store, I noticed that they're starting to get in. Most, the ones I saw were from Maui, but they're starting to get in the sweet onions, you know, that we can get in the sometimes of the year, the Vidalias or the Maui onions or the Peruvian sweet onions. Don't use those. Use the regular white onions or yellow onions that you can get in the grocery store. I got to take a quick break. I'm just going to keep chopping all these onions up. When I come back, we'll start the soup. Now we're just going to finish our onions up. And this is, like I said, this is the good base of French onion soup. If you've never had French onion soup, it is a delicious um, base of onions and you, you use a I use a mixture of beef and chicken. Um, I put a little bit of sherry vinegar in it because the vinegar just adds a touch of deliciousness. And you can get sherry vinegar now in the grocery stores, anywhere you go, you know, but if you can't find it, you could use a touch of balsamic vinegar or maybe a tarragon vinegar would be good, but really do try to find the sherry vinegar. Vinegars are one of those ingredients that, you know, some people think that they're all real strong and real um, potent like some of the cider vinegars or white vinegars, but they really are not and they add a complexity to the dish that you get from no other flavor. And I have all kinds. I, I love to try all new vinegars. If I see a new vinegar at the store, I bring it home and I try it because you never know if you don't try new ingredients and new things and new recipes and new techniques and new foods, how in the world do you ever learn to cook anything other than the same five dishes that, you know, most people, I read one time, most people have 10 dishes 
that they cook over and over and over again. And you know me, I just really like to try new things. I like to experiment with flavors and experiment with different foods and new products and things like that. You know, the, my philosophy is it's only food. You know, it's only food. So why not try some new things? My pan is good and warm. I'm going to put some olive oil in the bottom just to coat. You don't want your skillet too hot. We are not sauteing these onions. We are only sweating them. So you do not want your skillet, and mine is a little hot, so I'm going to turn it down because I don't want these to brown. All I want to do is sweat out. This looks like a lot of onions, and I guess it is a lot of onions, but it will cook down to nothing. So we want to just get these in there, and these need to sweat. Now, the difference in sauteing and sweating, sauteing is when you brown something up really quick, and sweating is when you bring out the natural sugars and the natural juices that are in the, in the vegetable. So we don't want to brown these. So I'm going to turn my heat down because this pot is one of those heavy cast iron pots, and it retains a lot of heat. And you want to kind of do this very, very slow and easy. And it's very easy to make. French onion soup is not difficult. It sounds fancy. It looks fancy when you get it done. But it's so easy to cook. Now, I'm going to put a little bit of salt in with my onions because the salt will pull out some of the moisture. I'm going to add a little bit. I'm not going to add too much because I'm using a broth, a chicken broth, and a beef broth. And that, of course, has a lot of sodium in the product. So we don't want to add too much. I want to add my freshly ground pepper because just about everything that is not a dessert, and some desserts, but most everything that's not a dessert, I put fresh ground pepper. I do not use the pre-ground stuff that you get in the little tins at the store. I just find that the flavor of freshly ground is so much better. It's so much more peppery and hot and just wonderful. And you can, you know, even if you don't own a pepper mill in the grocery stores today, over there where they sell the, the salt and pepper and the spices, they have the little disposable grinders that you can buy, and it has the peppercorns in it, and you grind it. Those are wonderful. I use those too. So you don't have to have a pepper mill. You can get the disposable ones at your regular grocery store, right by where they have the, the salt and the pepper in your store. Now, I'm going to just kind of let these hang out for just a minute, and I'm going to talk to you about our bowls. Because French onion soup is one of those soups that you cook it on the stove and then you finish it in the oven. I have today, I've got these little oven-proof bowls. You can get these so many different places. They're just a, a, um, like a, a ceramic-y, you know what I'm talking about, the, the terracotta type bowls and you can put these put the soup in there and then we're going to put the french bread and the cheese and we're going to put these under the broiler to melt the cheese. It's very important when you're making french onion soup that you use an oven proof bowl. You don't want it this is not the time you want to use your pretty little you know your little china looking dishes that are pretty and and all of that but they will crack in your oven. So you've got to make sure that your that the that the crock that you put your soup in is an oven proof up to, you know, the broiling heat gets pretty hot. It's like 500 plus degrees. So you want to make sure, but I just, I've had these for a long time and you get like six of them for five or six dollars. They're not much and, and I just have them lined. I went ahead and put them on a lined, parchment lined baking sheet because sometimes, and quite honestly, I think it's the best part, but the cheese will we'll melt down over, and you'll see what I'm talking about when we take these out of the oven. We'll melt down and get on your baking sheet, and I promise you cleanup is so much easier if you will just line it with some parchment paper. If you don't have parchment paper, use aluminum foil, something between your bowl and your baking sheet. Otherwise, you are going to be scrubbing for quite a while. So let's check our onions. See how they're already starting to kind of condense in there? Let's turn it back up now that we've got the initial heat off. Um, they're starting to sweat out and they're starting to reduce in size what looked like a mound of onions. When we get ready to finish this soup, we'll be down to next to nothing. 
And I like a lot of onion in my soup. Some restaurants will have it, and they have just a little bit of onion in a lot of broth, and that's not the way I like it. I like a lot of onion, a lot of deliciously flavored broth. And I'm using today, we're going to use provolone cheese over our French onion soup. Some, sometimes you will find it made with Swiss cheese. Um, some people even make it with, you know, like a Monterey Jack or something like that. But I personally prefer the provolone. You could do it with Swiss cheese. You could do it with whatever kind of cheese you like. Um, some beautiful goat cheese would be good. Whatever kind of cheese you like would work. Um, but I, I just really like the provolone. It just adds, it melts beautifully, and it gets that toasty brown color that you want on top, and it's absolutely delicious. So we're going to be using the provolone cheese. i got to take a quick break. When I come back, we're going to wrap up the soup. We're going to get the rest of it, the ingredients in the pot, and we're going to talk about our wonderful sandwiches that are going to go along with our soup. I'll be right back. John chapter 15, verse 2 says, Every branch that bears fruit he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You know, just in the natural, a gardener will prune plants so that they will bear more fruit, become more productive, grow to be fuller and, and just full of life. God also prunes our lives. Now pruning is not fun and many times, most often, it is very painful, but that's when we need to hold on to God even tighter and know that He's pruning our lives. He's thinning our lives to build our character, to make our character fuller, to make our witness fuller, to make our walk fuller so that we will bear more fruit for Him. Submit to God's pruning and hold on to Him during the pruning. Okay, and now we're going to finish our soup. And I want you to look and see how much those onions have reduced. And you see the liquid that comes out of the onion? So, yeah, I can promise you I could just eat that right there over a hamburger and I'd be happy. We're going to add, I'm just using boxed broth that you can buy in any grocery store out there. And I'm going to use two boxes of the beef. And I always try to get the low sodium if I can. Let's see, I may just need one box of the beef. Let's see. There's one whole box of the beef. My pot's not as big as some of the others that I use sometimes. And I like to mix beef and chicken because the chicken kind of lightens up the beef just a little bit. So let's add one of the beef and one of the chicken. And that's just plain store-bought. I, I like the boxed. Very good. See how yummy that looks. And we'll add about half of this box of the beef because I just don't have room. If your pot's a little bigger and you like a lot more soup, you might add the whole container, but we just don't have room, so that's okay. Now I'm going to add a pinch or so of dried thyme, about probably a teaspoon. Don't want to overpower. The star of the base is the onions, but the thyme just adds a little bit of woodsiness, a little bit of earthy flavor to it. Remember, we did salt and pepper our onions, and the broth, of course, has a lot of salt. Now I'm going to add a splash of the sherry vinegar that you can buy. I'm probably going to add, I'd say, a good fourth of a cup of the sherry vinegar that you can get anywhere. You can buy it just in, in the grocery stores now have come a long way in, in getting different, you know, ingredients and things that, that we used to couldn't get. Mmm, smells so good. I just love it. Now, we need to just put the cover on this and let it simmer. All right, now let's get started on our um, sandwiches. We're going to make grilled Mon uh, Monterey Jack, pepper jack cheese with ham sandwiches. And you could make this in a panini press if you have a panini press. And that's the one gadget that I love in my kitchen, but I don't have one here, so we're just gonna we're just gonna cook them like you would a grilled cheese sandwich. Only we're gonna kind of jack it up a little bit. Now here I've got just some slices of regular. I like whole wheat bread, and I've just buttered the outside. I've got my skillet preheating here, so I'm gonna go ahead and get my two sandwiches buttered side down. We're going to add some pepper jack cheese, which I love. It's just, it's a, it's got, it's a Monterey Jack cheese with this particular blend has jalapenos and habanero peppers in it. So it's nice 
and hot, which I love. So we're going to make some sandwiches here. Then I've got some just deli sliced ham that you can get anywhere. I like the natural ham that doesn't have the nitrites in it, but you can get whatever kind of ham that you like in your store. We're just going to make, and we're going to put our tops on there. We're just going to kind of let this hang out there till the butter starts melting and it just grills up there so yummy. So now let's get our soup going. Let me move my parsley here. I've got my lined baking sheet, remember, that I told you you for sure want to line your soup. Matter of fact, let's move right here if we can because that way I'm closer to my ladle and my soup pot and I won't make a mess on my stovetop. So our soup, as you can see, is just simmering away and look how yummy that looks. It's just got all kinds of onions and the broth. And so we want to take a ladle and we want to put a ladle full, getting onions and broth both in your crocks. And make sure, like I told you earlier, that your crocks are oven proof, that you can put them in the oven at a very high temperature or you'll be sorry, you will crack in your, your good little fragile dishes if you use this. This is not the time to use your pretty little porcelain things. You wanna use something that can go into a hot oven. Trying to divide out my, now this recipe will make, you know, probably about eight crocks of soup and I can easily, easily eat two of these. When I'm hungry, I can easily eat two crocks of soup, but it's my favorite, so, you know, Plan on, you know, a good crock per person. Let's get some more onions over here in this guy. And then just fill it full with your broth. Now you see the mess that I've already made? <laughs> That's why you put it on a lined baking sheet. Put your onion soup mix, I've got it turned it off here. And you just wanna kinda fill them up with Onions and broth, this guy needs a little more, and a little more broth here. Our soup is in the oven, let's turn our sandwiches over, and they're good and golden brown. And I've used today, I used the pepper jack cheese, but you could use whatever kind of cheese you like. You may just like American sliced cheese, whatever you like is fine. Just make sure that you butter the outside of your dishes. Our crostini's in the oven. Our soups are under the crock and our sandwiches are cooking away and it's almost time to eat. And we've got our grilled cheese and pepper jack cheese and the ham sandwiches and I cut that in half. Doesn't that just look yummy? I can't wait to bite into that. And here's our beautiful soup. See how the cheese just kind of melts down and it, it gets kind of that goldeny um, caramel look on top and that just adds so much flavor to the cheese and to the soup, and I just love it. I could just eat this all day long. So over here, we have our wonderful apple crostini. Remember, that's just a free-form tart, and after like 10 minutes, we just wet the um, outer edge of the tart and sprinkled it with that raw sugar, but this is just a free-form apple pie, basically, but it's a tart, and it's called a crostini because you don't have that finalized form. And here's our beautiful French onion soup with our wonderful sandwiches. I hope that you'll try this, and I promise you it's not difficult, it's easy, and we can all do it. I will see you next time on Everyday Mama. Due to the overwhelming requests, an Everyday Nana cookbook will be coming soon with complete recipes from episodes one through 35. To find the recipe of the week, log on to www.everydaymana.net or www.livingfaithtv.com. Thanks for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa.